if you can avoid those most common mistakes, you're gonna feel a lot more glutinous exercise and you're gonna get what you want out of it, which is that reorientation and turn towards the opposite side. My name is Greg Chaplin. I'm a physical therapist and strength conditioning specialist. And in this video, I'm gonna dive deep into the clamshell exercise. I'm gonna talk about why I most typically use this exercise and then the common mistakes that I see when I see people perform this exercise. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you'll know when I upload a new video. And then if you like the video, slap a like on it and leave me any questions below in the comments and I'll make sure to follow up in a future video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So for those of you who don't know, the clamshell exercise is when we're laying on our side, we have our feet together and we're gonna lift this top knee, kind of opening and closing like a clamshell. And the purpose of this activity is to engage the glutes. Now you're gonna see two hip angles most commonly used. One is gonna be more like with the hips at about a 60 degree angle. So the knees are gonna be a little bit closer to hip height. And then the other variation is going to be with the legs a little bit straighter with the body. And this is gonna bias different parts of the glute. So with the legs up towards that 60 degree angle, we're gonna get more upper glute fibers, which are a little bit more transverse in orientation. And that's going to mainly turn us towards the opposing side. And then as the legs go straight, we get a little bit more of the glute medius muscle, which is a little bit more oriented vertically and the lower fibers of the glute max muscle, which again are oriented vertically. And that's gonna contribute a little bit more towards our hip extension type movements. So the purpose that I'm typically going after when using this exercise is to help reorient the pelvis towards the opposite side. I'm going for those transverse fibers of the glute most frequently when I'm using this particular exercise. So now let's get into the four most common mistakes that I see people make when using this exercise for the purpose of reorienting to the opposing side. The first most common mistake I see is just not getting the setup right in terms of where the pelvis is pointing. So if our right knee is behind our left knee on the setup, our pelvis is actually pointing up towards the side that we're working. And because we're trying to reorient to the opposite side, we're actually not going to get those transverse fibers to shorten enough to do that if we start in this position. Because as we lift this leg, we're still pointing off to this side, in this case the right, instead of towards the opposite side. So the fix is to bring that knee above that opposite side and then lift. The second most common mistake I see is that even when people get the setup right with the right knee ahead of the left, when they go to lift, instead of keeping the pelvis pointing down towards the support surface, they actually open up and they move the pelvis and leg as a unit instead of keeping the pelvis pointing down and just moving the leg. Again, this isn't gonna uh, result in that shortening that we want or that effective reorientation. So the fix is hold your hand here potentially to give you a little bit of awareness of where your pelvis is pointing, then move the leg only as far up as you can. And then slowly over time, you should be able to lift that leg a little further without that pelvis rocking back. The third most common mistake that I see people make is they hike this hip up and they squeeze this space between the crest of the hip and the lower rib cage. And what this does is it puts the glute again in a position where it's not in a very effective position to contract. And so what you'll need to do under those circumstances is to take your hip and unhike it down. You'll know you have it when you feel your hip on the left side in this case, pushing down into the table. Then from there, you're gonna lift this leg and you should still feel that pressure in the downside hip. But again, you're still gonna have all the other things, so you're not rocking back and that right knee is gonna start ahead of the left knee, but you're having an emphasis also on unhiking that hip, then you lift. The fourth most common mistake is pushing down too hard with the downside leg. So what this does is it actually fires up the glute on the bottom side, and this actually prevents the turn towards the downside that we're looking for. So in this case, what you would do is you get into position, like we talked about before, if you have that bottom side pressing down into the table, what you might do is press the outside part of the heel on the downside foot into the table a little bit, press the hip on the downside into the table a little bit, and just imagine that you're gonna lift this bottom knee up a little bit towards the opposite side. 
Now, you don't actually have to lift it, but just imagine lifting it just enough to get a piece of paper under there. And what you're gonna feel is the downside hip digs in and a little bit of that outer downside heel digs in enough to give you the ability to start to turn over that side prior to lifting that top leg. So to recap, the four most common mistakes that we see are not getting the setup right. So starting with a right knee behind left knee type of orientation. So the pelvis is actually pointing towards the side that you're trying to work to reorient. The second mistake is when we lift that leg, moving the leg and the pelvis as a unit back towards the side that we're trying to orient away from. Then that third most common mistake is hiking up that hip towards the rib cage, putting that glute in a disadvantaged position to engage. And then that fourth most common mistake is pushing the downside leg into the table, using the glute on the downside to fight the glute on the top side. Again, not getting the reorientation that we're looking for. So if you can avoid those most common mistakes, you're gonna feel a lot more glutinous exercise and you're gonna get what you want out of it, which is that reorientation and turn towards the opposite side. So if you have any questions about this, leave them below in the comments. Let me know what videos you'd like to see in the future. And until the next video, thanks a lot for watching. Peace.